Exodus chapter 15, we we'll begin reading in verse 22. The Bible says, So Moses brought Israel from the Red Sea, and they went out into the wilderness of Shur. And they went three days in the wilderness and found no water. I'm glad our young people found some water down there in Georgia. Mm -mm. goes on to say, And when they came to Marah, they could not drink of the waters of Marah, for they were bitter. Therefore the name of it was called Marah. And the people murmured against Moses, saying, What shall we drink? And he cried unto the Lord, and the Lord showed him a tree. And when he had cast... Uh, and when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them, and said, If thou wilt diligently hearken to the voice of the Lord thy God, and wilt do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments, and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon thee which I brought upon the Egyptians, for I am the Lord that healeth thee. Let's pray. Our Father, we sure do bless you. We thank you, Lord, for how you helped our young people. Lord, we're thankful that, Lord, they was in an environment that was saturated by you. God, you touch their hearts. Lord, I pray you'd continue to touch their hearts. Don't allow the help they got this past week to fade away. Father, I thank you for a good Sunday school hour. Thank you for a good report of good jail services this morning. Thank you, Lord, for the good singing. And Lord, thank you for the Word of God. Now, Father, I pray that... You'd use this unworthy vessel now. Help me to convey those things you've spoke to my heart. Help me to say everything that you'd have me to and nothing contrary to the word or will of God. God, uh, there's no telling the needs, folks, here in the sanctuary this morning. But God, you know every heart. You know our downsitting and our uprising. You know the number of the hairs on our head. And God, you know what folks need this morning. I do pray if there be any amongst us, as Christians already pray, that are lost without the Lord, that today would be the day of their salvation. I pray for that one that may be struggling, that God, you'd strengthen them. That one that is low and maybe in a valley, God, you'd lift them, put them on a mountaintop. That one that is seeking something from the Lord, you said in the word of God, seek and ye shall find. God, I pray they'd find you precious to their soul this morning. Now, Father, I pray your perfect will would be, uh, Lord, uh, done amongst us. I pray you'd put a hedge about us. You'd bind the powers of hell. The sweet spirit that's been in here would remain and help folks to mind God. And Father, we'll thank you for what you do. Matter of fact, Father, we're going to thank you in advance because, God, you do all things well. For it's in the wonderful and holy name of the Lord Jesus we ask these things. Amen. Amen. God has just delivered his children out of Egypt. They'd been in bondage for some 400 years, and Miss Marcy thought that God had forgotten all about them. God sent a deliverer, Moses, down there. and You know the story. God sent plagues on Egypt to plague Egypt uh, to where Egypt allowed the children of Israel to go. They'd been servants and slaves there, and Egypt let them go. And can I say they got down to the Red Sea, and Pharaoh and his army came pursuing them, and God parted the waters of the Red Sea, and the children of Israel... Uh, went across on dry ground, and as Pharaoh began to pursue them, God closed up the sea, and that was the end of Pharaoh and his army. Well, here in this text, we find that for three days they've been journeying in the wilderness. Did you ever feel like you was going somewhere, but you didn't know where you was going? You didn't know why you was going? 
You didn't know how you was going to get there and you think that God's forgotten all about you? Mm -mm. I mean, they're three days removed, Brother Bob, from a miracle that we're still talking about all these thousand years later. Amen. And now they're thinking God has forsaken them. Three days they've journeyed and they've been doing it without water. I don't know about you, but there are times in my Christian life when I'm reading my Bible, when I'm praying, when I'm trying to walk with God, when I'm trying to be faithful to God, and it seems like there is no water. Hmm? Can I say, old hymn writer wrote this, press on, weary pilgrim, press on. Listen, there's a payday someday. Yeah. And can I say this, uh, God has not forgotten you. God knows exactly where you are. Right? And if he chooses to show himself, wonderful. Right? But if he chooses to hide himself, wonderful. He's God. Uh, I'm just glad I'm not going to hell. Uh, I deserve to go to hell, but I'm not going to hell because the precious blood of Christ uh, has redeemed my life. Uh, but there are times in our Christian life when it gets dry, when we're like we're in a weary land, and I'm talking about being in church. There is no water. But I'm sure glad when he breaks through, aren't you? Three things in this text as an introduction. Can I say that in these three days' journey, they finally come to a place, and they come to a place called Mara. Can I say Mara in itself, it even is defined here in the scripture, means bitter. If you're not careful, you go without water for, long, for a little while, you'll get bitter. I tell you what happens, Brother Ray. We're sitting at service like this, and folks get to testifying. Uh, Big Doug testifies how good God's been. Uh, 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 the colonel gets to testifying how good God's been. Uh, uh, others began to testify how good God's been. Uh, and Brother Bob, uh, it's been dry. Uh, we haven't had any water. Uh, and we start hearing how God's been watering everybody else. And we're not getting any water. And we'll get bitter. Amen. Can I say, all you have to do to get bitter is start looking around. The scriptures exhort us to looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Uh, and by the way, when you're looking at him, you don't get weary. No matter if anybody's getting any blessings or not, when you're looking at him, you're looking at somebody that's altogether lovely. Mm. But can I say, the first thing they got was bitter. They got tomorrow. And then when they got bitter, we find uh, in verse 24, they got to murmuring. They're murmuring against Moses, the man of God. Isn't it amazing the man of God was the greatest thing since sliced bread when he led them out of Egypt? First little obstacle they hit, it's all his fault. He's good enough to follow to get us out of our mess, but as soon as we got a little trouble, he's a heathen. They began to murmur. Can I say, uh, when you get bitter, the first thing you'll do is you'll start trying to bring other people down. You'll start murmuring and complaining about anything or anybody. And by the way, Miss Lisa, uh, 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 the devil's real good. He's got a big magnifying glass. He's good about magnifying and showing you other people's faults. Can I say, it's real easy to find fault except in ourselves. Mm -hmm. They go to Mara, and then they get to murmuring, get to complaining, get to whining, get to pooch mouth, uh, walking on their lower lip. Uh, God don't love me anymore. God's not good to me. He's good to everybody else. He's not good to me. And it's all this person's fault or that person's fault. And you get to complaining and blaming others for your situation. Brother Ron, it's called a victim mentality. Woe is me, woe is me, I'm a victim, I'm a victim, I'm a victim. You ought to be in hell. They should have still been in Egypt getting their backs broke, making bricks. God delivered them, but that wasn't good enough. Hmm? Uh, we want God to deliver us and then us to never have any troubles or any trials, or any hardships or heartaches. We want a, a, a golden path to the golden streets. It just don't work that way. The Bible says, Yea, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution. Amen. Can I say the Bible says that man's days are few and full of trouble. 
Can I say that the Bible said, Jesus said, that a prophet's not without honor, save in his own country. Uh, can I say there's always somebody going to be looking at you, always somebody going to be talking about you. Uh, but listen, uh, 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 they talked about Jesus and they crucified him. Uh, we ought to be thankful that we're not hanging on a cross somewhere. But we're not. Lexi, I appreciate your testimony. We are ungrateful. We're spoiled, rotten children of the Lord. Can I say, Brother Joseph, most people didn't give a second thought about coming to church this morning. They knew the air conditioning would be on. They knew the pews would be padded. They knew that the lights would be on. They knew that people would be here. They knew that uh, uh, somebody would sing. They knew that the preacher would have a message. They didn't give a second thought to that. You know, it's only by the grace of God we're here. And that boy named Dawson that somebody referred to, I think it was Xander, somebody referred to, or no, it was Aiden, referred to that boy named Dawson. His preacher's family and his family's own one in church said, everybody keeps leaving. He was praying for his church. It's only by the grace of God, Ichabod it and stamped on this place. Amen. You say, that had never happened. Talk to Brother Clint Howe. It tell you about 25 years ago, they was about ready to close the doors. Got down to a handful. Hmm? Say, what happened? People got their eyes off of Jesus. People took for granted there'd always be a church. Hmm? Can I say there are places all over this, this tri-state area that used to be a house of God. Today they're museums or they're boarded up. Say, why? God isn't good? Oh, God's good all the time. I don't know if I'll get to the message or not. Uh, can I say they went to Mara? They got bitter. Then they got to murmuring. But praise God, we find a miracle. Uh, look with me, if you will, verse number 25. And he cried unto the Lord Moses, and the Lord showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet, there he made for them a statute and an ordinance, and there he proved them. He saw a tree, cast it in the waters, and the bitterness was made sweet, changed their lives. I'm going to preach with God's help for a minute on this thought, the tree that will save your life. Now God didn't tell us what kind of tree. And can I say, uh, that might be... Uh, designed in the providential will of God because if it would have been a fir tree, we'd think only a fir tree could help us. Huh? Or if it had been an oak tree or an elm tree. Uh, but it was just a tree. Uh, can I say the power wasn't in the tree, the power was in God. Uh, power was in obedience to Moses to do what God said. Uh, and God brought a miracle. Uh, and friend, there's a tree that can save your life. Uh, you may have come in today uh, and your life's in a mess. Uh, you may have came in today and you're bitter. Uh, you may have came in today and you're heartbroken. Uh, you may have came in today uh, thinking there is no way. Uh, but I've got good news. Uh, God's got a tree that will save your life. Uh, can I say this morning, if you're lost in your sin. Uh, there's a tree uh, at Calvary that will save your life. Uh, uh, the old rugged cross still makes a difference. Uh, can I say it was at Calvary uh, that Jesus Christ, uh, the darling incarnate Son of God, uh, uh, carried your sin and my sin up Calvary's hill and laid down uh, upon the cross of Calvary after he'd been beaten beyond recognition uh, and he shed his blood uh, not to be the propitiation for our sin uh, the Lord laid on him the iniquity of us all uh, and it was at Calvary uh, he took the handwriting of ordinances and laws that we couldn't keep uh, and nailed them to his cross uh, and made a way where sinners could be saved from their sin uh, if we'll uh, I believe on the Lord Jesus Christ we can be saved uh, what a blessing for that tree of Calvary uh, where God uh, uh, reached 
down the fallen man uh, and he suspended between heaven and earth made a way for sinners to be saved from their sins. Uh, can I say the tree of Calvary has saved your life? It did mine 49 years ago. For 10 and a half years, I listened to my granddaddy preach about Calvary. I listened to people sing about Calvary. Uh, Calvary never really meant much to me. Uh, and Brother Clint, when you had, uh, uh, sang that song this morning for Sunday school, I got to look at it, folks, uh, and I got to thinking they've lost the significance of Calvary. Uh, they weren't singing from their heart. Uh, but I say, uh, on that third Saturday night of March 1974, uh, I made a trip by Calvary by faith, uh, and Jesus Christ saved me uh, and changed my life. Uh, and there's no place like Calvary. Uh, it'll save your life, my dear friends uh, oh there's no place like Calvary oh it was a place of a skull it was a hideous place but it's the place that you got to go by faith and realize that Jesus died for your sin was buried and rose again according to the scriptures uh, and if you'll put your faith and trust in Him as your only means of salvation, that He is God, uh, and trust Him as Lord and Savior, He'll save you from your sins. I don't mean to be a smart aleck, Brother Ed. It's just my nature. But bottom line is, if you don't go by Calvary and trust in Jesus, you'll die and go to hell. He's the only way. Mm. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. The tree of Calvary has saved your life. But you might be here today and you might be saved. But you're going through some things. God's got a tree that will save your life. Can I say there's the tree of commitment that might just save your life. There's a lot of folks that have trust issues. Just can't trust. I, I get it. Brother Rod, I, I get that man will disappoint you. Man will let you down. You can put your confidence in a man uh, and things go well for a while, but that man may be the one that turns and breaks your heart. Mm. But I know one. He'll never break your heart. His name is Jesus. He is faithful and true. He is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And can I say you can trust him? Uh, you can have trust issues with people, uh, but you ought to never have a trust issue with Him. Uh, you ought to, by faith, uh, just believe Him and walk after Him and walk with Him and talk with Him and put your confidence in the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, you know why some of you struggle in life? You don't have any commitment to the Lord. Hmm. Can I say, the Bible says draw nigh to God, He'll draw nigh to you. If you won't commit to the Lord, you're not going to get any help. Your life will be a mess. Folks, all the time, we call them smoes. Sunday morning only. They're committed to Sunday morning only. Can I say, Amen. God may then only be committed to you Sunday morning only. See, we want Him at our uh, 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 access at all times. We want Him to just show up when we need Him. But we don't show up for Him. And by the way, if you're not committed to Him Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and you just show up on Sunday, you're not committed at all. Church ought to just be a reflection of what you've done in your heart all week long. Uh, there are folks who don't read the Bible, don't pray, don't give God of the first fruits of what God's blessed them with. Amen. Folks that don't uh, walk with the Lord, don't have a song in their heart with the Lord, uh, they show up, they expect the preacher to bring the Lord to them. And I say, the Christian life is a lifestyle. When I got saved, I chose to believe the Bible. And I chose to believe the God of the Bible. And I chose to put into practice the things in the Bible. Why? Because God's committed to me. I want to be committed to Him. 
Listen, I, I, I was never one who just did anything halfway. When I played ball, I tried to give it all I got. Well, I can't walk today. Uh, didn't do anything halfway. When I played checkers with the kids, I never let them beat me. I didn't do it halfway. Uh, when I eat ice cream cone, I don't eat it halfway and throw it away. No, I get the whole thing and I'm licking my fingers. You know what I'm saying? The greatest thing that ever happened to me is when Jesus saved me. Why would I go halfway with him? I'm going all the way to glory because of him. But the trip, I want to go all in with him. Commitment will be a tree that will change your life. Hmm? Uh, you say, well, I act like Brother Phil. You might act worse. I don't know. But it'll be worth it if you get committed. You don't have to act like Brother Phil to be committed, and I don't know that Brother Phil's committed. I'm just using him as an example. I kind of think he is. I mean, any time we even ask that you know, we're going to have something around here, if there's cake or anything, he's showing up. I'm surprised he wasn't at a ladies' meeting last week at our house. I mean, I'm surprised. But I'm just saying, some of you, there's months go by and a bloodhound can't find you. And you wonder why your life's a mess. Because you've been drinking from Mara. But there's some sweet water. Just takes commitment. Uh, talk about the tree that'll save your life. How about the tree of correction? Where's all that shouting on that? You say, preacher, give me some Bible for correction. I'm glad you asked. The Bible says in Job 5.17, Behold, happy is the man whom God correcteth. Therefore despise not the chastening of the Almighty. Anytime God is chastening, by the way, He don't chasten the devil's children. He chastens His own. And if you're without chastisement, you're a bastard, not a son. That's what Hebrews chapter 12 tells us. But can I say God chastens us not to make us bitter, but to make us better. To make our lives mature and whole in Him that others can see the great grace of God in our life. Uh, when our life is filthy, they don't see God. The Bible says in Psalm 94, 12, Blessed is the man whom thou chastenest, O Lord, and teachest him out of thy law. God corrects us and chastens us that He can teach us. That's the... Original teachable moment, by the way. 1 Corinthians 11, 2. But when we are judged, we are chastened of the Lord, uh, that we should not be condemned with the world. Hebrews 12, 6. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, uh, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. Uh, Revelation 3, 19. As many as I love, uh, I rebuke and chasten. Uh, be zealous, therefore, and repent. Some of you need the tree of correction. Uh, people say, Preacher, why do you preach so hard? Why don't you preach like Joel Osteen and soften it up a little bit? Well, Joel Osteen don't preach at all. He don't even call himself a preacher. He calls himself a speaker. And can I say, I cringe when I go to places and people pray for the speaker. I'm looking around thinking, who are they talking about? Mm -hmm. God called me to preach. Mm -hmm. Didn't call me to speak. Because I can't even speak good hillbilly, let alone anything else. But can I say, God corrects His children, and some of you need to be corrected. And the reason I preach so hard is, number one, I preach what God gives me. Sometimes we get to preach on heaven. Sometimes we get to rebuke. Sometimes we get to exhort. Uh, uh, but we uh, preach doctrine, all long suffering and doctrine. Why? Because that's the will of God, my dear friends. Uh, I know this. Sin will keep me from this book, but this book will keep me from sin. And can I say preaching this book keeps me from sin? Uh, I enjoy going to meetings where I'm not preaching, where I get to sit so I can be preached to. Because I don't know about you, but I need the rough edges off me sometimes. Uh, 
And can I say this, Brother Bob? And I appreciate Brother Bob. I'm going to embarrass him right now. When I preach them hard messages that all of you can't wait to get past me on the way out, Brother Bob always hugs my neck and thanks me for loving the congregation so much that I preach that hard. Don't you? You do that every time. huh? But, but listen, I don't like preaching those hard messages. I'd rather preach heaven all the time. But if we don't keep the rough edges knocked off, we get hard, we get bitter, we get nasty, and we're not doing the will of God. You know what correction does? It humbles us. Did you see them kids up there today? They're broken. You know why? They've been around a place where they've heard some preaching. The Spirit of God's been working on their hearts. Been showing them a lot of things they've been investing their lives in. Doesn't matter. Hmm? That's what preaching does. Uh, some of you need the tree of correction. We don't like it. Huh? Oh, it's, getting, it's heavy in here right now. Let me go pick on my favorite little picking buddy. Do you like getting in trouble? Getting in trouble ain't the problem. Getting caught's the problem, isn't it? Huh? Huh? Your mom shows no mercy, doesn't she? Not really. Yeah, I know. Right now, and I know you love your mama. I know that. But when you get in trouble right now and she's rough on you, you really don't enjoy that. But when you get grown, you're going to look back and you're going to thank God you had a mama that loved you and that corrected you, that kept you in church. We don't like correction. Sometimes we need that tree of correction. It'll save your life. It'll keep you on the straight path. It'll keep you from going left to right. Can I say? You might need the tree of contentment. What happens with a lot of people, they sit in church and they hear preaching and they hear singing and they hear it so much and they don't open their heart to it and their heart gets hard and preaching and singing bounces off of them they get to looking in the world for contentment if I had a swimming pool I'd be content if I had a boat I'd be content if I had this I'd be content if I had that mine is if, if I had just another watch you know what I'm saying some of you got that. I got more watches than I got sense. Can I say Solomon experienced it all, yeah. saw it all, yeah. and in the end, in a bitter spirit, he said, vanity, vanity, it's all vanity. Right. Hmm? You'll never find contentment in the world. Amen. The fellow with the bumper sticker says, he who has the most toys wins is a liar. Hmm? He who has God wins. Godliness with contentment is great gain. There's nothing better than being in the will of God and having the peace of God. And some of you have been seeking contentment in other places than Him. You'll never find it. Can I say that rabbit hole just keeps going and going and going. The devil keeps wetting your appetite for something else. Now let me say this. There's nothing wrong with having things. There's nothing wrong with having money. I'm tired of hearing people say the love of money is the root of all evil. That's not what the Bible says. The Bible says it's the love of money that's the root of all evil. Money's not the root of all evil. The love of money is the root of all evil. When you love money more than you love God, you've got a problem. But when you love God, He's allowed to give you some money. Mm. You know, I know, I know Baptist preachers say you've got to be poor to be right with God. Well, what do you do with Job? He's the richest man in the East. And when he stood true to God, God blessed him with more than he had in the beginning. What do you do with Abraham? Rich. What do you do with Solomon? Rich. What do you do with the... I'm telling you, it's not a sin to have money. It's a sin when money has you. But I found there's contentment with the Lord. Uh, Paul said whether he's abounding or whether he's abased. He found satisfaction in the Lord. He said he was contented at all. 
There's contentment with the Lord. Maybe some of you need a good dose of contentment. It might save your life. The peace of God that passes all understanding might save your life. Now, let me say this, I'll be done. You might need the tree of completion. See, some of you get toe deep in the water. Some of you get ankle deep, some knee deep, or some waist deep. But you never totally get resigned to the will of God. See, you're, you'll never get that way till you terminate self. You've got to learn to die out to self. Then you'll be complete. The Bible term is whole. You'll be a mature, or the Bible term, perfect man or woman you'll never ever know the true fullness of God till you deny self and resignate, uh, resign yourself to the will of God John the Baptist said I must decrease he must increase when you get to that point God will complete you in ways you never ever dreamed of now let me show you this I mentioned just a few trees that will save your life. The real beauty of this text is found what happens after the tree. On the other side of the tree, there's an oasis. Look at verse 27. And they came to Elam, where were twelve wells of water, and threescore and ten palm trees, and they encamped there by the waters. Say, what is that? That sounds like an oasis. An oasis. Palm trees and wells. Hmm? Sounds like a great place for them to park. Can I say that 12 wells of water, 12 is always the number of God's government on earth. In the Old Testament, you had the 12 tribes of Israel. In the New Testament, you had the 12 apostles. Uh, it's always a picture of God's government on earth. In this dispensation, the dispensation of the grace age, uh, uh, the time, the fullness of times for the Gentiles, uh, in this day and age, uh, his government on earth is the local church. Uh, and the oasis you find, the tree, uh, will save your life. The first place he puts you is at the church, uh, a place uh, where there's plenty of wells, uh, a place uh, where your thirst will be quenched, uh, a place where you got a shade from the weary land out there, uh, a place where you can find rest for your souls, uh, where uh, uh, in and through and by the local church. Jesus loved the church uh, and gave himself for it. Uh, where would we be without the church? Uh, look at the family we have. Uh, look at the friends we have. Uh, we get to come and worship God in spirit and in truth. Uh, no matter how bad a week, uh, no matter what I go through, uh, if I can just crawl and get to the church, uh, I'll find help for my soul. Uh, you know what these kids were testifying to? Our church is an oasis. And some of you here, service after service, and never take a drink out of the wells. You just assume it's always going to be here. You ought to thank God for the wells. You ought to thank God for the church. The church is our oasis, our refuge from this old sin-cursed world. For a few minutes, we can get our minds off all the junk of the world and get our minds on Jesus. We can come together with like-minded folks whose spirit bears witness with our spirit. And we can rejoice around the truth of the Word of God. And we can rejoice over our Savior and exalt Him. What a blessing. I wonder today, has God got a tree for your life? Has God been speaking to your heart? You haven't drank from some sweet water in a while? He's got wells. It's all up to you. Will you come and get a fresh drink this morning? Let's all stand. Brother Clint, if you'll get a song of invitation. 
God spoke to your heart. The altar's open. If you're here today, you need to be saved. Why don't you come? Say, preacher, I don't know how to be saved. You just come. We'll get somebody to take a Bible and show you how to be saved. You can be saved today. Maybe today God spoke to your heart about something else. Maybe you've needed a little correction. Why don't you come? Let God put that tree in your life and help you. Maybe you need a little contentment. Maybe you just need a little him. Why don't you come? He'll help you. Folks are coming. Folks are praying. They're picking out a song. Let's have a word of prayer. Father, we bless you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, for helping us today. Lord, there may be somebody here today that's in Mara. They need a tree. Whatever tree they need for their life. God, help them. God, just speak to folks this morning. And God, I pray you'd be glorified. And you'd bless in this invitation. Certainly save that one that's lost. And God, we'll thank you for what you do. Speak to hearts now, Lord. Help folks be obedient. We'll bless you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Do you struggle to find good Bible-based resources to supplement your personal devotions? If so, head on over to ibcflorence.com today and click on Bookstore, where we have a ton of resources. And as always, thanks for listening.